And you thought I was gonna stop at one walkthrough, huh? Well, you were wrong. Okay, we're gonna do another one. And today is actually gonna be a live solve. Hello, everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're gonna be live solving the third question on this previous contest, Silver Number 3. Silver was like pretty hard this time, it seemed, because like a cut up of 650 is crazy for the first contest, so. Yeah, so I'm gonna go over this third problem, it's gonna be epic. Enjoy. Alrighty, Yusuko 2019 December Contest Silver. Problem 3 Milk Visit. Farmer John is planning to build N farms, okay, that will be connected by N minus 1 roads, forming a tree, okay, I was gonna say N minus 1, whenever you have N of something connected by N minus 1 edges, that means it has to be a tree. So, all farms are reachable from each other and there are no cycles. Each farmer contains a cow, wait, <laughs> no, farmers do not contain cows, okay, each farm contains a cow whose breed is either Guernsey or Holstein. Farmer John's M friends often come to visit him. During a visit fr with friend I, Farmer John will walk with his friend along a unique path of road from farm A to farm B I. Okay. Additionally, they can try to get some milk. They can try s wait what? They can try some milk. Oh oh, they're gonna bruh. From any cow along the path they walk. Since most of Farmer John's friends are also farmers, they have a very strong preference regarding milk. Some of his friends will only drink Guernsey milk, while the remainder will only drink Holstein milk. Any of Farmer John's friends will only be happy if they could drink their preferred type of milk during their visit. Please determine whether each friend will be happy after visiting. Okay, so what's our N and M? Okay, so we have 10 of 5 N and 10 of 5 M. So we can either do N log M, M log N, N log N, or M log N. M. That was confusing. But anyways, we can't do N squared or M squared or N times N. Alright, so that limits our algorithm quite a bit. So let's first look at the input format because I do not understand what it's asking it. So it has integers n and m, and then the second line will give you a string of the cows in each barn, and then the next n minus 1 integers give you the graph, and then the next m integers give you ai, bi, and character ci. Oh, so ci is going to tell you which one they want to drink. So basically, wait, did it say something about unique? Oh, oh, there is a unique path. So it's basically asking whether or not they'll encounter a Holstein or a Guernsey on their trip. So basically, we got to figure out whether or not there's a Holstein on each of these and uh, for each of these M guys. Okay. So let's look at the sample input. So first we have five barns and we have one, two, three, four, five. And then one is connected to two, then two is connected to three, and then three is connected, no, one is connected to five, and then one is connected, wait, what? Did I miss one? Oh, two is connected to four. Okay. So if the guy goes from one to four, wait, 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 let's put the whole scene in Guernsey. So there's a whole scene here, there's a whole scene there, there's a Guernsey here, and then Holstein Guernsey. Alright, so the guy from 1 to 4 will have 3 Holstein, so he'll be happy. The guy from 1 to 4 will have no Guernsey, so he's going to be unhappy. The guy going from 1 to 3 will get a Guernsey, so he'll be happy. And then the guy from 1 to 3 will get 2 Holstein, so he'll be happy. And then the guy from 5 to 5 will not get be happy because he only has a Guernsey. Okay. Guernsey. So why don't we try like rooting the tree and see what that what happens if we root the tree. So let's just say that we root the tree at 1. Basically what rooting means is that we're just going top down. So 1's going to be at the top and we'll go down from there. So there's a 1 here and then it goes to 5 over here and then it goes to what? 2 and then it goes to 3 and 4. So why don't we calculate the number of Holstein and Guernsey for each path from 1 to like something. So wait let's see. So the path from 1 to 5 has 1 Holstein. The path from 1 to 2 has 2 Holsteins. The path from 1 to 4 has 3 Holsteins, and the path from 1 to 3 also has 2 Holsteins. Okay, so this is not in the input, but let's say that we have like a path from 3 to 4, and we wanted to find out how many Holsteins there are on it. We could add the number of Holsteins on this path, then add the number of Holsteins on this path, and then subtract the number of Holsteins on this path, and then we get the number of Holsteins on the overall path. Because as in these three guys, and then as in these three guys, but then it subtracts these two, huh? So it'll count the everything over here like multiple times that we don't want. So that doesn't work. We could theoretically do least common ancestor nonsense, but that seems hard. So the main problem is finding these paths that go backwards and then down again. Cause you then have to find the common ancestor and that's not very easy. Well doing this in N squared is like not that bad, right? Cause we could just, um, we could just run BFS or DFS from each point and that'll take n squared time and we'll have all the number of Holsteins from each point to another point and then as long as that's not zero they're happy and then we can just find the Guernsey by subtracting but unfortunately that's not good enough n squared is not gonna cut it well there is one trick that you might be able to use to find the common ancestor because if we find the common ancestor we all, all we gotta do is this right this would work 
But that common ancestor thing is like kind of complicated and I don't know whether that's the intended solution. So, hmm. Well, okay, let me just explain what you could possibly do if you have no other options. What you could do is you could store the like two to the nth parent of each node and then do binary search to find the common ancestor. But I don't think that's the answer here. I don't think that's what they're looking for. There has to be a simpler solution. Well, why don't we just consider the normal one? Let's like take this out of a rooted tree formation and let's see what we got. Well, huh, another thing we can notice is that if two is a Holstein, let's say, is it a Holstein? Yeah, so if it's a Holstein, then any path that goes through it is gonna be happy if they have a Holstein. All right, let's see. So we know that if we have an endpoint of our path is a Holstein, then our path has a Holstein in it, right? If an endpoint has a Guernsey, our whole path has a Guernsey in it. Now, the only thing that's weird is if you have a Guernsey and another Guernsey. It only becomes problematic when you have the same thing on both sides that are not what you want. Like, if you have two Guernseys, but you want a Holstein on either side, then you don't know whether there's a Holstein in between. Well, if there's no Holsteins in between these two Gs, then there has to be all Gs in between it. So basically, the only way that the guy's not happy if there's two Guernseys at the endpoints and he wants a Holstein is that all of the things on his path are all Guernseys. So how do we use that? Okay, so I guess what we could do is we could basically find like which Guernseys are connected to each other, which Holsteins are connected to each other, and which Guernseys are connected to each other just through like Guernsey only paths. And then like, if two of them are connected by a Guernsey only path, then there's no Holsteins in between them, right? So basically in this case, like, these three Holsteins all could reach each other just by going through Holsteins. But this Guernsey can't reach the other Guernsey just by going through Guernseys, and this one can't reach each other by just going through Guernsey. So let us just go through the examples. What, what, are, what are the test cases? Okay, so the first one's one, four, right? One and four. So then they're in like the same circle. The only path between them has only Holsteins in it. So if a guy wanted a Guernsey, he would not be happy. But if he wanted a Holstein, he would be happy. Now as for one and three, well, we know that we have a Holstein on one end and a Guernsey on the other hand, so everyone's gonna be happy. That's not a problem. And then five and five, so it connects to itself, but they're both in the same group. So that means they didn't have to pass through any Holsteins to get back to it. So that means if they're asking for a Holstein, they won't be happy. Okay, so we're good. Let's code this boy up. So basically the strategy is we first find out which guys are connected to each other just by like the same type of cow. And then once we do that, we can do the strategy and find out whether they're happy or not. Okay, alrighty, so we got our FNs. Let's read in our stuff. So we just gotta read in N and M. And what else do we have to store? We have to store whole theme and Guernsey. So we made a car array to store our type and then we'll read it in over here. So the reason we could just do C and type is because a string is basically just a care array. So it'll basically just fill up our type with the right type from zero to N minus one. And then next, we gotta read in all the graph stuff. Let's make our JSON C list. And then a for loop. So before we do our queries, let's first do the components though. So basically the strategy is we're gonna go through all the cows. And then from that, we're gonna like do BFS or something to find all the ones that are connected to it that have the same type without going through any of the other type and then move on to the next one and so on and so forth. And all the ones that are connected to each other are gonna be marked with the same number. So in order to mark them with the same number, we're gonna use a, a visited array. So int visited 100,001. And then before we start, we should set it all to negative one so we know that we haven't visited them yet. All right, and now we just gotta run BFS for each one. So we first have to make sure that the one that we're looking at right now is not already in a group. And then we run our BFS from this cap. All right, let's make sure we include Q. I'm gonna go from one to n so it's easier. Cause in our, actually, actually, wait, wait. We'll do zero to n, and then in our JNC list, let's do x minus one. Let's shift everything down to zero to n minus one, cause that's a lot easier to do. And then while the queue is not empty, we're gonna run BFS. Oh yeah, we also had to have a counter of what group we're on. So we're starting off on group zero. So we're gonna take out the first thing on our queue. We're gonna pop the queue, and then what we do is we set the visit of x to the current group, and then we go through all its neighbors. And if they're the same type, we'll go through them. Oh yeah, at the very beginning, we should make sure that we store which type we're working with. So car current type is equal to type of i. Oh, and we should not reuse i here, so let's do j. So if the same type as our beginning thing, we're gonna push it to the queue and that should be good. And also we need to make sure it's vis not visited yet. And then we push it, nice, okay. So once we're, oh, and then at the very end, one more thing, we gotta make sure that we 
uh, increment our group so that we put the new things in a different group. All right, so now we're done with our groups. Now we can just do our queries like we usually do. So for int i equals zero, i less than n, i plus four. So we go through all of these queries, we read it in. So the first case, if the endpoints have different types, then we're good, we just print out one. The other case is that both endpoints are equal to the desired count, and then we're fine in that case as well. But in the last case is the one where we have two of the same things, but they're not what we want. So then we have to check if they're in the same component. So if they're not, that means we have to have gone through the desired one. So that means that it is uh, good, so see at one. Otherwise, we see at zero. All right, and then we should be done. Let's test it out on the input. Wait up. Oh, what did I call it? Oh, visited, visited is what we called it. Whoops, it didn't work already. Wait up. Why is always printing one? Okay, let's go through this carefully. Okay, so if type A minus one is not equal to type B minus one, then we're seeing out one, that's right. Oh, type J has to equal to car type, not, not I. Okay, okay. Okay, we good. So does that mean that, yeah, I don't know what happened then. All right, let's try this again. All right, one, zero, good. Good, one. One and three, zero. Very nice, it worked. Let us run this in the actual thing. F out, F out, and F oh, that's a lot of F out, but okay. Hopefully it doesn't tell me to add a end LF variant, that'd be annoying. All right, moment of truth, let's see this. Nice. Uh, what? Hold up. How did that happen? Uh -huh. Say what now? I'm confused. So basically in all the smallest cases it didn't work. What? Okay, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. What? Hold up. Okay, let's, let's just read our code through real quick. Alright, so we read in our n and our m, then we read in our type, and then we... Okay, maybe... No, but type should be working fine. And then we go through, for each n minus 1, we go through and we read in the edge, and we push back to our adjacency list. Okay, that looks right. And then for all our n, we once again set the visited to negative 1 as we should. Okay. Alright, and then q, and then group is 0. Okay. And then for each n, we make sure it's not visited. We push it. We set the current type to the type of the first one. And then while it's not empty, we go, go, go. Front one, we pop it. We set the visited of this new one to x. We go through all the j's and then... Oh, oh, bruh. Oh, huh. Okay, well, I did m. I actually did n instead of m here for the queries. Okay, bruh. Best mistake ever. Alright, you ready for this? This is gonna be epic. Full green. Full green, calling it right now. Hey, let's go. Very, very, very nice. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I tried to explain my thought process. Hopefully it was helpful. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what other problems you guys want me to do for years ago. I am very open to suggestions. Also, suggest for my teaching, please. I bet. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot to me that you watch my videos and leave likes. Thank you guys for watching so much. And also, join the Discord. Okay, I'll leave a link in the description. Please, join the Discord. It's gonna be epic. Alright, see you guys. Thank you guys for watching again. And see you guys next time.